Hey guys, Middle Jesus here. Now it's been over a month since I got the Xbox Series X, and since then I've played it pretty much every night, playing tons of games on it. So I thought I would do a follow-up video, kind of give you my updated thoughts and opinions on it, some of the things I like and some of the things I don't. Plus, I'm gonna show you a bunch of games I've been playing lately. Let's take a look. My experience so far of using the Xbox Series X after a month or so and playing a bunch of games on it is generally really positive. The hardware and also the operating system is very solid. And, you know, to be honest, that's not that big of a surprise because ever since really the Xbox One and specifically the Xbox One X, well, that was a rock solid console. And, you know, Microsoft knocked it out of the park with that one. And so going into the Series X, well, it just, it just feels like a very mature and very well-built and very well-designed console. And in general, I haven't experienced that many lockups. There's been one or two, but that's mostly been when I've been really pushing the system. Like I'll be downloading a game in the background uh, via Game Pass, but also I'm switching back and forth between two really heavy big games. Like, cause it's got that auto resume feature where it, it does a snapshot to the hard drive. And a couple times that has locked up the system, but nothing that, you know, has been really noticeable or even that surprising when I've been pushing it like that. Now, really the biggest issue has been storage space because, well, it comes with a one terabyte SSD in there, which you have about 800 gigabytes available to you, which may sound like a lot, but I actually filled that sucker up in about two weeks because, you know, between owning physical games and then also messing around with everything that is available on Game Pass. Well, as you see here, you can see that I've got 39 games installed. And so I very quickly had to go and, uh, well, I didn't have to, but I really wanted to go and get that external Seagate SSD that's available. And that basically gives you another terabyte. And so it kind of killed me. <laughs> it really hurt the wallet to do that. But, you know, this is my main current gen system and, you know, 39 games on there. And as you can see, like, you know, Call of Duty, Cold War, well, that's 145 gigabytes just by itself. You know, and then plus you've got other games here from, you know, just on down the line. It fills up really quickly when you're playing next generation games. They're massive. And so, yes, I did go to Amazon and buy that Seagate SSD for $220, which Again, it's like that was that was definitely a painful pill to swallow. But you know what? If you're if you're gonna do it and you're gonna be playing as many games as I am, you know I think it's worth it. And honestly, I can't imagine if you got the F Xbox Series S, which I think only gives you 300 gigabytes available. So you can pretty much just put you know a couple current gen, next gen, whatever you want to say, like big games on there because you'd fill it up extremely quickly. I also want to mention the controller and specifically the triggers on the controller because I did complain about that in my original video. And I have to say, my opinion really hasn't changed that much on it. I, I'm not crazy about how some games hold on to the triggers a little bit. It just doesn't feel right to me, you know? It feels kind of weird. And again, it's not every game, but when it happens, it annoys the crap out of me. So I don't know. It's. I think it has something to do with the haptic feedback, the vibration that is now in the triggers. And so they are a little bit more advanced now. And it's weird because I don't see other, other reviewers complaining about it. And so maybe it is something to do with my controller. Maybe I'll buy a new one and see if I, if I have the same experience with it. But yeah, again, I'm not crazy about it. At least I can always go back to the Xbox One controllers, which don't have that problem at all. And those are the ones I prefer. Now let's go ahead and jump into what I've been playing on it lately. And you know, when I first got it, just like every game console that you get, man, you just try a little bit of everything. Plus I had Game Pass for the first time, downloading a ton of stuff. And uh, now that I've had it for a while, I've kind of settled into the, you know, a core couple games I've been really enjoying. And the first one is Call of Duty Cold War. I love the single player in Call of Duty games. It's like a big budget Hollywood movie. 
And what I love about these games is that, you know, the shooting isn't very complex. The stories are so over the top and dumb, but they're very entertaining and they don't really last that long. And plus all of the Call of Duty games are always kind of showcases for what, you know, the best graphics can do at the time. So I've been really enjoying this game. I'm playing through the, uh, the single player campaign. You know, it takes place in the, the 80s, which is my, that, you know, I was a kid in the 80s, so it's very cool to see that era. I'm totally digging it. Uh, plus, when my uh, my nephew was over here, Will, he jumped into Zombies for uh, the first time, and I was watching him play a little bit of that. So haven't really played a lot of the Zombies in the other games, but it was really cool watching him do that. So I think he and I are probably gonna jump in and do a couple of those. Uh, that was really fun to watch. He's way better at the game than I am, but man, does it look fun. Next up is a game that a lot of people recommend I check out that is called The Falconer. And this is a game that has an update to take advantage of the new console hardware. So it looks really great as you see here. Now, a lot of people thought I would like this game and they were right because it is very similar to Crimson Skies. It's a, you know, aerial combat game that, that controls and feels very much like that game. Now, I haven't gotten very far in this game because I just got it, but yeah, it's definitely got that Crimson Skies vibe to it. The controls and all that feel very natural. Although, as you can see here though, you know, instead of a World War I style uh, steampunk airship or, you know, aircraft, you're actually on a massive Falcon. So it's cool that it's got its own uh, backstory and graphic style. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to checking out some more. Also, when I first got the Xbox Series X, I was playing a lot of Dirt 5 because that's another game that was optimized to take advantage of the hardware. And I do really like Dirt 5. Uh, I played it quite a bit. But then I learned that Forza Horizon 4 got an Xbox Series X patch. So I was like, okay, well, I definitely got to jump into some more Forza Horizon 4. And yeah, wow. I mean, this game is absolutely beautiful on the new console. And so while I like Dirt 5, man, there is just, for me, no beating that open world vibe of Forza Horizon 4. I love the fact that you can just go completely off road. Um, it's really cool because it also has the four different seasons. So when you first boot up the game, it starts in winter and then it moves over to spring and summer. Uh, it's just, such a cool game, so many cars to unlock. You can pretty much just go anywhere at any time. I also really love, and I'm kind of obsessed with the barn finds. That's when you, you'll you get a text on your, your phone in the game where someone's like, hey, there's a rumor that there is a rusted old abandoned car somewhere out in a field and you need to try to go find it. So it basically gives you this purple circle on the map and somewhere within there, is this really rare, unusual, one of a kind car. And so I get really obsessed with trying to find those. That is so much fun to do. So yeah, I am absolutely loving this game. It's my driving game that I've been playing the most over the last couple weeks. Also, like many of you, I was really looking forward to, and I picked up a copy of Cyberpunk 2077. And uh, so where do I start with this game? I guess I should probably say from the outset that this game I feel actually does work really well on the Xbox Series X. So this game is, is running the Xbox One version, but the game code knows it actually is on a next generation console. So it can take advantage of some of the additional hardware here. So I'm not seeing as much of a performance problem as the previous generation because of the new hardware. So that's the good thing. Also, I'm running this game in quality mode. So there's two modes that you can set on the Xbox Series X version of the game. Uh, performance is the default and you can go into quality mode. The difference being is that uh, in quality mode, the max that you'll get is 30 frames per second, but the visual quality is significantly better. So for me, that, that's a trade-off I'm willing to make. Uh, the other thing I did is I turned off film grain and also chromatic aberration. So uh, those are two settings that you can mess with. There's other settings that you can also play with to you know, your taste, but those are the versions that you are seeing right here on the screen. Now, that's not to say I haven't run into any bugs. As you see here, there are definitely some weird bugs. And as of the making of this video, for the most part, they really are just 
a lot of these you know npcs that you run across in the city or maybe in bars or you know whenever you're running around in the game it's definitely annoying and it sucks that the game does this because it really brings you out it's kind of laughable honestly because it does happen fairly often i would say you know when you're playing the game you are going to run into this at this point until you know the next big patch comes out however thankfully for the most part i haven't ran into any game breaking bugs um, I suspect I probably will at some point because this game is fairly massive, but hopefully they'll get a patch out or two, you know, before that happens. And for the most part, I am really loving this game. It's exactly what I wanted. I mean, the city is incredibly impressive. Like, it's amazing the amount of detail that is in this game. I, I'm blown away when just walking around, just going, wow, I've never seen a game like this. Actually, I was thinking, it's like, you know what? The next Elder Scrolls game is going to have to live up to this. Actually, every massive open world game is going to have to live up to this. The amount of detail is insane. And the story so far and the role playing is very cool. As a matter of fact, it's kind of overwhelming. There is so much stuff going on in this game and so much freedom and so many missions and side missions and people to talk to. It's God, it's amazing. So. Yeah, this is going to be a game I'm going to be playing for a long time. And honestly, I probably will replay it when the next gen patch comes out. So again, keep in mind, this is not running the Xbox Series X version because we don't have that. It's running the Xbox One version. It's just got that extra hardware. So yeah, it's a it's a disappointing release on many levels, especially if you know if you're trying to do this on the previous generation. But it's also an incredibly ambitious game. It's mind-blowing and then the only other game i want to mention because i'm kind of curious about your feedback on this is on yakuza like a dragon so uh, when i first got the xbox series x i dove hardcore into the new yakuza game really enjoyed it for quite a while and then at about the 10 or 15 hour mark kind of got bored with it to be honest like i love the characters i love the story Obviously going through Japan is amazing. The game looks great, but the random combat in this game gets boring and old really quick. So, you know, again, I'm at a, I, I don't know exactly how much time I put into this. It's, it's at least 10 hours and maybe less than 15 hours, but I just really got tired of walking around the street and going into battles. So I don't know, I'd be really curious to know if, you know, you are playing the game what do you think about that? Does it get better? Because I, I'm seeing a lot of people who are saying this is like their game of the year, and I can see that. But what about the combat? Like, does that get better? Does that get more compelling, or do you just kind of just do it? So anyways, love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. So that's my thoughts on the Xbox Series X after about a month or so, plus all the games I've been playing on it recently. Uh, that's actually not all the games I've been playing. I've been playing a lot of, you know, these game pass games just kind of here and there but yeah man so far actually i'm really happy with this console uh, i know a lot of you will probably be asking well, what about the playstation 5 and the answer to that is very simple i haven't been able to get one yet just like many of you <laughs> uh, many times i've had the ps5 in my my cart to check out on you know several of these sites and the, the demand is just overwhelming for that console and to be quite honest you know that's fine I have more than enough games to play here. And, you know, in a couple months, whenever the PS5 is a little bit more readily available, I'll jump on it. But for now, I am really enjoying the Xbox Series X. So I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. And do you have an Xbox Series S or X? And are you running out of storage space like I was? You've gotta be, these games are massive, right? All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.